So hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our Pine Martin talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the Pine Martins here at Wildwood, so let's introduce them. Pine Martins are very hard to spot in the wild. They are rare, elusive, usually come out at night and tend to live in the tops of the trees. Here at Wildwood we have three Pine Martins, one male and two females. The eldest is the male, his name is Aero. He was born in 2009 and he's now 11 years of age. In personality, his keepers say he's a bit shy and secretive. Iona is one of the two females. She was born in 2012, so she's now eight years of age. She's described as being distant, but playful and quite friendly. The youngest of the three is the second female, her name is Boost. She was born in 2016, so she's now four years of age. And to quote one of her keepers, she is beautiful. If you're wondering about ages, in the wild, pine martins can live up to 11, though usually they live to about three or four. In captivity, pine martins can get to an age of 18. Pine martins have been described as rare, elusive tree-dwelling hunters. They're about the same size as a domestic cat, but have a very different body shape. The head is quite pointed. It has sharp teeth, forward-facing eyes, proportionally large ears, and long whiskers. The body is long and slim, with an extremely flexible backbone. The legs are quite short and powerful, and it has a long, bushy tail. In colour, the fur is a chocolate brown and very distinctively they have a yellowy cream patch on the throat and the chin known as a bib. The individual markings and shapes around the edge of the bib are absolutely unique and can be used for recognising different pine martins. Pine martins are found right across northern Europe plus Italy, the Balkans and Turkey. There are at least seven martin species worldwide. The stone martin, also known as the beech martin, that's found across most of Europe, but not Scandinavia. Plus it's found in parts of Central Asia. The American martin, as the name suggests, is found in Alaska, Canada, and the Pacific Northwest of the USA. All martins live in forests. You can find pine martins, despite their name, living in conifer woods, broadly forest and mixed woodland. Beech martins, they're moving into town and cities, but pine martins, they still prefer to be in the woodlands, though there are exceptions. In March 2013, a uh, league football match in Switzerland was delayed when a pine martin ran onto the pitch. Uh, it was chased by several of the players. It was temporarily caught by one of the defenders. It bit him and ran off again and was eventually captured by the goalie using his gloves. Uh, the pine martin was removed from the field and play resumed. I think it's worth mentioning that both the defender who was bitten and the goalie who caught the pine martin were on the same side and they actually won the match suggesting that the pine martin really should be their mascot from now on. The reason why pine martins prefer to stay in the woodlands is that they are brilliantly adapted for life in the treetops. And this is true of all the different martins. They have semi-retractable claws. They're the only members of their family, the mustelids, to have developed this feature. And if you're wondering what semi-retractable claws are, if you think of a cat, a cat can slide its claws in and out. It keeps them nice and sharp. If you think of a dog, dogs cannot do that. If you can slide your claws in and out, they are retractable. Dog's claws, non-retractable. Pine Martin's claws, in between the two. They can't slide the claws in fully, but they can slide them in a little bit. They have double-jointed ankles, and that helps them climbing up and down trees. They have a long tail for balancing. And when you put these all together, you have a small, sleek, fast animal that can literally run through the treetops. They jump from branch to branch. They can actually jump safely across distances of four meters. 
If that wasn't impressive, they can actually fall 20 meters to the ground and land lightly on their feet, like a cat, without hurting themselves. One of the funny things about pine martins is um, they have to learn to climb. And when the babies first come out of their nest, they don't like heights. Uh, they have a habit of hanging on to the tree and screaming very loudly for their mummy. In fact, when the babies are getting old enough to leave the nest, the mother pine martin will move them to a new nest in a tree that has nice, rough, craggy bark, something like an oak tree, so it's much easier for them to grip on and learn how to climb. Pine martins are one of the few predators that can chase and catch red squirrels. And small mammals form the bulk of their diet, particularly voles. However, they'll also take small birds, birds' eggs, creepy crawlies, frogs, insects, and even carrion, dead meat. However, pine martins are actually omnivorous. They'll eat plants as well, particularly nuts, fruits, and seeds. In the autumn time, in a good season, berries can make up to 30% of their diet. And what they're eating will change the colour of their poo. If the pine martins are eating blackberries, their poo goes purple in colour. If they're up in Scotland and they're eating bilberries, then their poo goes bright blue. So, end of section five, talking about uh, what the animals eat. It's worth mentioning that out in Europe, where you get stone martins and pine martins in the same woodlands, they coexist by feeding on different types of food. Stone martins naturally spend more time on the ground, so they'll concentrate on insects and berries. While the pine martins, up in the trees, they'll mainly be taking small birds and small mammals. Pine martins belong to a group known as mustelids, and these are better known as the weasel family. The Latin name for weasel is actually mustella, and it's a very diverse group. Other mustelids that we have here at Wildwood include the polecats, the stoats, the otters, and the badgers. And something that all mustelids have in common is that they are stinky. They communicate with each other using scent. Pine martins have glands on the throat and by their bottom for scent marking, leaving chemical messages where they go. In addition, they'll use their poo to mark out territory. Uh, pine martin poo is described as having a sweet floral scent. I've never tried sniffing it myself, but there you go. And this gave them the old name of Sweet Mart, as opposed to Foul Mart, which was a nickname for the rather more stinky polecat. Pine martins are solitary. Their individual territories will quite often overlap each other, and they are not strenuously defended by individuals. That's very important. They tend to meet to mate at midsummer, so July to August. And when we were trying to breed pine martins here at Wildwood, we ran into a big problem. It was originally thought that if we had the two pine martins side by side, their enclosures side by side, they'd be able to see each other, smell each other, and that would be fine. It didn't work. They were not interested in each other. The solution proved to be the strange system of tunnels interconnecting and controlled with trapdoors that you see around the pine martin enclosures. As I say, in the wild their territories would overlap and interlink. By using the trapdoors, we can allow the pine martins to move through each other's territories in the breeding season. Each side is getting the correct level of scent in the correct way, and we've had many successful matings between them. Once upon a time, pine martins were found literally coast to coast, right across England. Locally, we know of reports of pine martins living in the Bleen Woods up until the 1800s. Today, you mainly find them in Scotland and Ireland, though they are starting to re-establish themselves in Wales and Northern England. Part of the problem was the loss of the forests. As I've been saying, pine martins are very much woodland animals. 
and we know that by Tudor times so many of the forests were being cut down for timber, particularly for warships, that they were actually facing an energy crisis. However, the pine martins were also hunted for their skins, for their fur, particularly in the Middle Ages and the Tudor times. Henry V, between 1413 and 1418, bought over 20,000 pine martin skins. Uh, in 1440, most of the skins and furs bought by Henry VI were martin. The decline in pine martin fortunes continued in the later Tudor times. They were named as one of the dangerous animals under the Preservation of Grain Act, and a bounty was put on their heads. Matters went from bad to worse in Victorian times. Uh, at that point, gamekeepers would kill anything they saw as being a threat to pheasant, partridge and other game birds. This would include shooting, poisoning and trapping. The last reported pine martin in southern England was shot in East Sussex in 1931. Today we're looking at how to help the pine martins and how to bring them back into England. In 2019 we had the first relocation project. In the Forest of Dean, 18 pine martins were brought down from Scotland. They have been released into the Forest of Dean and they are being observed and monitored. The good news, they seem to be establishing themselves very, very nicely. Long term, we'd very much like to see the pine martins brought back to Kent. In fact, their presence may help with the problem of grey squirrels. In areas where you get pine martins, red squirrels and grey squirrels, it's been proven that pine martins will go after the grey squirrels but not the reds. The greys tend to be a bit slower, uh, more chunky, so more meat on them, and easier to catch. So strange as it may sound, bringing these small elusive predators back to Kent may be the first step in bringing back the red squirrels as well. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about these amazing and elusive predators and we hope you have a great time out here at Wildwood.